Hey friends, it's Mary here, and uh, you may wonder, where has she been? No videos lately, right? I mean, I think it's been at least two weeks since we posted a video, and I'm gonna be honest with you. I've been quiet because I've really been debating whether or not I wanted to share this one with you. I'm sorry. I know it's selfish and when you hear why, you're gonna be really unhappy with me, but I gotta tell you, we found a diamond in the rough here and um, we love it. And I kinda wanted to keep the secret hiding place all to myself. But then I thought, you know what, that's not fair to the rest of you. So I broke down and I'm gonna share it with you. But I have to tell you, I've debated long and hard about whether or not I would do this video. But we made our way to the Atlantic side of Florida about uh, just a little over two weeks ago. And we are staying on Merritt Island. And we're staying at a campground called Cars Park. That's K-A-R-S, Cars Park. And it is actually a part of the Kennedy Space Center um, and NASA. So you, um, you do have to be a member to stay at this campground. So you have to pay the membership fee, the annual membership fee. But then once you do, you can stay here for a calendar year without having to pay that membership fee again. And the, to be a member of CARS, just so you know, there are some stipulations. You have to either be associated with NASA or the US military. So if you have one of those connections, you can be a member of CARS. Um, and so I wanna take you and, well, first, you know what? I wanna tell you a few things. I'm gonna try to discourage you from coming here first. Okay. so. First thing you need to know is that um, this is a, obviously we're in central Florida, so it's right off the coast, the Atlantic coast, just due east of Orlando, okay? So it's the um, Orlando, the mainland Florida coast, then we have Merritt Island, then we have the Banana River, and then on the other side of the Banana River, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, is, um, uh, Canaveral Island, which is where Cape Canaveral is. It's where um, Patrick Space Force, my husband reminded me of that. It's not an Air Force base anymore. It's a Space Force. Um, but Patrick Space Force Base is on that island, as well as Cocoa Beach. So um, there's a lot of things happening on the next island over. There are large bridges that connect the mainland to this island and then a bridge that connects this island to the next one. There's one about a mile and a half from here that you can go across. There's another one maybe about eight miles down and then another one probably more like 10 or 15 miles down. So lots of opportunities to go across depending on which area of Canaveral Island you want to go to. Um, but let's see, let's talk about downsides. Why might you not want to come here? In the summer, it's super hot, okay? <laughs> um, but honestly, here in the winter, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's been in the 70s and the 80s, and the breeze makes it downright glorious. Okay, that wasn't really much of a deterrent, was it? Um, okay, other things that you may need to know when you come here. This is not a full hookup campground. There are no full hookups. So if that's an absolute need for you, don't bother coming because it's not going to be here. They have water and they have electric. There's no sewage at any of the sites. Now, with that being said, they do have a dump station that you can take your RV and dump it as many times as you need to. They also have honey wagons. That's our term for the little poop wagons. We think it sounds prettier, but anyway, they have honey wagons available that you can rent for a fee to dump your, um, your water, your holding tanks if you need to and you don't want to move your RV, you can certainly do it that way. There's also a local gentleman that comes in. He will dump your tank. He will flush your tanks and take it all away for you for 20 bucks. So you have that option as well. Now, what I will tell you is we have been here two weeks. 
Uh, we were here uh, a week and then we moved sites and I'll explain all of that in a minute. But uh, we moved sites and when we did move, we did dump our tank then. Um, and it really didn't have all that much in it because we were kind of careful, right? Um, but since then, we will be two weeks in the site that we're in now, which you can see behind me there. Um, we'll be two weeks in that site and so far, no need to dump. But keep in mind, we're trying to do it as conservatively as we can. So um, during the day when we have to use the bathroom, we will often walk over to the bath and shower house just to save ourselves that little bit of holding tank. Uh, we don't do the dishes until we have a full sink of dishes. Then we do them. We've also been utilizing paper plates and things like that a little more than we might normally. Um, the other thing is that we, I think maybe the entire time we've been here, maybe we've taken two showers in the RV itself. And when we do, we do what we refer to as a Navy shower. You know, you rinse off soap up, rinse down. Um, but we've been trying to be really conservative in that way. And the rest of the time, yes, we have been showering the rest of the time. But the rest of the time we're going over and we're using the shower facilities, which I will show to you in a little bit. Um, but we've been trying to do those things so that we don't have to dump as often. But I just want you to know there is no sewage available. So let's talk about cost, all right? There are two prices for the camps. Actually, there are three, I apologize. Three prices for the campsites. Those that are on the river, which I will explain in just a few minutes, the sites that face the river are $30 a night, water and sewage, okay? There are non-riverfront, um, sorry, I think I said lakefront. Anyway, riverfront, non-riverfront sites that are also water and sewage, those are $20 a night. And then they also have what uh, they refer to as tent camping, which basically is nothing, okay? You can park your vehicle there. Um, there's no water, there's no sewage, there's no electric, but if you wanna park there, they can do, you can do that as well. And I'll be honest, I don't know what the price of that is because that is way too primitive for a prima donna like me to camp in. So I don't know, but it's available and you could certainly ask, okay? So those are the three site options. What we are currently parked in, which you see behind me, is the riverfront. And I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail about that in a minute. And then I'll show you the other options after that as well. So let's take a look around and let's see what this campground has to offer. So this is the entrance to Cars Park, and you can see there that there are gates uh, that close. And after 10 o'clock p.m., those gates do close. The only way you can get inside the park um, is to have been issued a, um, a, a device that will open the gate for you before you leave. Otherwise, you can exit all you want because all that's uh, got a sensor on it, motion sensor. You pull up with your vehicle and let you out. You do need to let them know in advance if you're going to be out past 10 p.m. Um, and then they'll give you a clicker to let you open the gate when you get back. But this is a really nice safety feature. Now over here is a little bit of a boat harbor. Um, you can actually dock your boats here. You'll see there are several slips available um, that you can do. And then right out there, uh, right out that little opening there is where you can exit out of the harbor. And this is where manatees will come in, um, alligators are in here, lots of birds, really great stuff happening in this little harbor. Other amenities of this particular campground is they do have tennis courts over there. Um, you can see some more here. There are lots of pavilions that you can use. Beyond those pavilions, there's playgrounds and there are even baseball fields that you can utilize. And this building here is the office. So right there on that front, you go in uh, to that little like porch area. Inside the office is obviously where you would pay for your spots and all of that, but there's also, they call it the Cars Country Store. Inside of there, they have snacks, uh, they have ice cream, they have bait for fishing, uh, they have just a little bit of everything, even some Kennedy Space Center and NASA items uh, as souvenirs if you are interested. 
So just across the Banana River, which we are looking across right now, is uh, Cana Port Canaveral. And this is a huge cruise ship port. Um, it's not as easy to tell in this video, uh, but I can tell you some enormous cruise ships go over there. Today there are none in port, uh, but we've seen as many as five huge cruise ships over there at any given time. Uh, keep in mind that we are on Merritt Island. And Merritt Island is an island just off the Atlantic side coast of the Florida mainland. Uh, so it's the mainland, then it's Merritt Island, which is what you're seeing there. Then we have the Banana River, which I'm showing you now. And then on the other side of that, way out there is... Canaveral Island, all right, and they actually call that uh, Space Island or Space Coast uh, because the largest majority of that is taken up by either NASA at Kennedy Space Center or Patrick Air Force Base, which is on the southern part of that island, um, and so a lot of it all has to do with space. So, so now I want to talk about the options for campsites. Now, Right down here, this very first RV on the end here, that's ours. Um, and these campsites along here, which we're just gonna kind of pan down here, there are 20 of them, and they face the Banana River. Okay, so when you check in, uh, they may ask you, do you want a riverfront site? These are what they're talking about, all right? These actually face out to the river. A couple of things about these sites. First of all, there is a 14-day limit on being able to stay at these sites. There's a 28-day limit total here at the Cars Park, um, but only 14 of those can be spent on the riverfront. So you would have to either go there first and then move after 14 days or come in uh, towards the end of your trip, depending on how long you're going to stay here. Um, these are beautiful sites. You have the most gorgeous sunsets and sunrises over uh, the Banana River every morning. Um, and then you just have this really nice breeze and the sound of the waves right off of your RV every day. A uh, couple of downsides to these is if there is no breeze, there is a little bug here called noceums. They are so tiny you literally cannot see them, but I tell you they have a half hefty appetite and they will eat you alive, or at least they do me. Um, so when there's no wind, the noceums are right here by the water and they will eat you up. If there is a breeze, super nice, and you can really take advantage of that by not having to run your AC quite as much. Uh, the other downside, if you if there is one to these particular sites, is that there's not a ton of like uh, yard space, green space, okay? Because there's a little bit coming out of our RV, but then it is quickly consumed with these large rocks that you see all along that coast. So a lot of rocks there, uh, not a ton of green yard space if that's the kind of thing you're interested in. Now what we did when we got here is we were going to be here about 19, 20 days. We knew that was more than we could stay on the waterfront. So we actually chose a campsite further back, which I will take you and show you in a moment. We stayed back there for a few days, and then as soon as we saw one of these front um, riverside spots open up, then we just went to the office, asked if we could switch sites. As long as you can do that in a pretty short time, we did it in about 15 minutes, they are more than willing to let you make that switch. If it's going to take you very long to make the switch, they don't make any promises because, as I said earlier, this campground is first come, first served on the spot. The, spot. the other thing that you need to know is that these waterfront sites are $10 more per day. So the spots in the back are $20 a day. The sites in the front are $30 a day. Now, just a moment ago, I mentioned the fact that there wasn't a ton of green yard space for these particular campsites. And here's more of a close-up view of that. You can see that we have the big rocks here by the water. Then we have the smaller rocks. And then there's just that little bit of grass space between the RV and the rocks. Just about enough room for most of my outdoor map, but not all. Each site does include a picnic table, which you see there. Some of the sites, which I'm going to show you in a minute, their picnic tables are actually covered um, by awnings, but these up here on the riverfront side are not. You'll also 
So you never have to walk more than about uh, one or two RV spots to get to a pier to go out to the water. So this right here is an example of the first campsite that we stayed in here. In fact, this is the very campsite that we stayed in. Um, so you park in here, um, you back it in, which is super easy, plenty of room to maneuver. And then you'll see back there at the back, uh, that's where your electric and your water is. And then your table has a covered awning over it, which is really kind of nice, especially in the heat of the day to give you a little bit of a place to sit if you want to uh, without being completely, completely overwhelmed by the sun. But you can see it does have a lot more green space than the sites on the river that I showed you earlier. These are all grass spots. You can typically see where the previous campers have been, and we usually just try to line up accordingly, uh, but it's not an exact science, and it's certainly not a gravel or a paved spot. Uh, but as I said, really easy to get into. As you can see, lots of open space to get in here. We did have a little bit of rain yesterday, uh, so you can see a little bit more mud than usual. We had a pretty good amount of rain, actually. Um, but these are some of those sites that you can do that are $20 a night. Now one other thing I will show you is that, like I said, this was our spot that we were here before, but I'm just going to pano about a, uh, about a 180 degree turn here, and you can see that right there, yep, that's that river that we're actually facing now with our campground. So even from back here, you have a really, really nice view. Now you may have noticed in that last little bit when I showed you the campsite that we were in when we first got here, there were no trees. And so that's why that cover over your picnic table was so important. Um, but back behind that row of campers uh, is actually this really beautiful shaded area. And back here they have playgrounds for kids. Uh, there are campers, camping sites all along the edges. They are back in sites. Typically, these are a little shorter, so if you do have a large um, rig, you're probably going to want to stay a little further up like we did, uh, but these sites are available. And right over here, you can't see it really well, but there's a little pond over there uh, just to the right side of this. It does have a fence around it. That's for a reason. Um, there are lots of alligators that live in there as well, so if you like the wildlife, you're going to love this. Now this area over here is that third camping style that I talked about. It's really referred to as tent camping. Although you can see here that there is a truck camper parked there. He's been there the entire time he's been here. Uh, so he does have solar panels. You can see that out there. Uh, he doesn't need all the extras. So he's just utilizing um, this less expensive camping site. Um, but there is plenty of room out here for tents or sort of a boondocking situation if that's what you're into. One little tip I will share with you. When you check in, everybody gets one of those. You see this bright yellow sign in the window. Uh, everybody is issued one of these and we have to put display them in our window. The good thing about that is if you are wanting to move up here to uh, the riverfront positions and you want to do it later, you can kind of check out those signs, see what date people are going to be checking out. And it might give you a little heads up as to when you might be able to move to that front row position if that's something you want to do later in your trip. So this is the bathroom and the shower house. And I'm going to take you in and show you if you've been in a camping at state parks, you'll find this to be very similar type of quality there. Uh, so we'll go inside and take a look around. So inside the bathroom, we have three toilet stalls. One is handicap accessible, which does have a sink inside, and then two additional uh, toilets, as well as a sink right here in the common area. And as I mentioned, uh, we use this a lot during the day just to reduce the amount of waste that we put in our own holding tanks. And just around the corner from that bathroom door, uh, we have the showers. So there are two showers in this room. Uh, the first one here, oh, there came the vent, um, has a stuff room in there for you to sit things. There's also a container there, has the shower. This would be great for handicap accessible because there's plenty of room for a wheelchair to get in there and turn around. 
Uh, the other one is a little bit smaller. This one is not handicap accessible, but you can see they're very clean. They come in and clean these every morning and they, we've used them almost every day and they provided us a great option uh, for not filling up our own holding tanks. Now this is the dump station that I mentioned earlier. I want to keep reiterating that there is no sewage at the sites at the cars. So um, you do have the ability to come here, dump your holding tanks. You can do that mid-trip, uh, end of trip, well, however you want to do it. But the water's there and everything you need to dump your tanks. Another amenity here at Cars Park is this building right here. And this is called the Ceramics Club. And you can join this club and then have access to their uh, ceramic items. So there are, uh, you can throw uh, clay to make your own pottery. Uh, there are forms that you can use and uh, they have all the paints, the kilns, everything you need. And uh, it's just a really great additional thing it's $30 to join that club, but then you can use the services while you're here. Now, I mentioned earlier that they have a ceramics club um, right here at the Cars Park. And this is another thing that I think is just so unique and really gives this place kind of a community feel to it. There is actually an American Legion post right here at Cars Park. It's the John F. Kennedy Space Center American Legion post number 332. So if you are a member of the American Legion, you can certainly take advantage of that. They meet a couple of times a month um, and it's right here on the campground. Now this building houses the laundry. Uh, there's kind of a community room in there where you can utilize different facilities. Um, and there's even kind of a game room. So we're gonna go in and take a look around. Uh, but again, just another great amenity to use while you're staying here. Now we are inside of that common room that I mentioned. You can see here, there's a TV, there's a fireplace, there's a book exchange, uh, there's furniture to hang out, there's a pool table, there's a ping pong table, uh, plenty of space in here to just sit and talk. Uh, I was in here the other day doing laundry and there was a gentleman sitting right here uh, having a WebEx meeting for work. So uh, really handy. Over here, another desk space that you can use. Uh, there are also magazines available for you. And on the opposite wall over here, uh, we even have an elliptical machine and a treadmill uh, that you can use while you're staying here. And as we progress back to the next area, you'll see this is the laundry. Not a lot, but you know what? It works. So uh, there's washers, two washers, and they are $1.50 to wash. And then over here on the opposite wall, we have two dryers, and it is one dryer per load to dry. Plenty of space for folding things. Um, there's even a bar over there you can see where you can hang your clothes up when you bring them out. So nothing fancy, but everything you need to get your laundry done, including a ironing board and an iron for you to use. And then we're gonna go back, this is a really long building, y'all. We're gonna go back through this last door. And back here you can see uh, there's extra tables if you wanna have an event. There are all kinds of puzzles that have been started or in that case finished by others. And you can come in here, you can use this space, um, you can use any of the puzzles, you can do it as a group or as an individual. Uh, one day we were in here when we were doing our laundry and there was a woman sitting right back here on the back wall painting some of her ceramics that she had brought over from the ceramic building. So uh, just a really great usable space and uh, always available for you while you're staring, staying here at Cars Park. So last night we had a little bit of rain and this morning we were looking out the RV window and we spotted a, a dolphin swimming just out in the water away from us. Um, and uh, I'm trying to get him here on video. If you look in the distance between the sign that's standing up in the water and that little uh, wood piece that's standing up with a bird on it, you'll see that dolphin's fin come up every now and then. And uh, there it is, poking its fin up just a little bit. 
that's one of the things we love about this. It rained all through the night, but this morning it is just dead calm. A little bit of a breeze to keep the bugs away, but honestly, it is absolutely stunning and breathtaking here. Um, on my way out of the RV, I saw a raccoon that has a little burrow in the rocks. He's not my favorite. Oh, there's the dolphins again. They're just a little bit past that wood piece now. And uh, there's a crocodile, or alligator actually, that we call Bob, uh, who's here. Uh, there are pelicans, there are seabirds, there are osprey. Uh, looks like he's coming back out now. There, there he was. Did you see it? I hope you did. Uh, but it's just absolutely gorgeous here. And all of this uh, kind of gives you an idea as to why maybe I kind of sort of wanted to keep this place a secret from the rest of the world. But I couldn't. I had to share it with you all. Uh, so there, I wish it were a little closer. I've been trying to coax him back to me. But there you see him swimming just on this side of those pieces of wood. And typically where there's one, there's more. Uh, but uh, for now, it's just him that we've seen. Oh, there we go. Oh, make it a lot of water. Oh, he's really moving now. Okay, I don't know what he was going after, but he got something. Um, that was pretty impressive, y'all. <laughs> so there you go. Just another reason to spend some time at Cars uh, Campground, Cars Park, because the wildlife scenery is just breathtaking. So I was mentioning earlier when we talked about the dolphins and the other things, I wanted to show you some more wildlife here. This is uh, one of the osprey that we see around everywhere we go, which is really cool. So I wanted you to see the alligator right there. He is. He was a little closer to me over on the other pier, but he swam clear over here to the edge. You can see him just right between or underneath the bend of that limb beneath those green leaves. So he's a pretty good size one, not huge, maybe five feet. Um, and by Florida standards, everybody tells me that's a small one. So there you go. We've been watching this beast for a while, but uh, never seen him moving before. But today he's on the move. This is his area. It's just a little culvert here. And just um, like that, he's gone. And he's gone. <laughs> One thing that I do want to mention about uh, this particular campground is that when you are on your way to the campground itself, that is on, um, it's on Florida 3, um, you, there is a drawbridge. So this is because uh, this is the body of water that runs between two rivers, a river on the right hand side that goes between the mainland of Florida and Merritt Island. And then on the left hand side of this drawbridge, as we're looking at it now, is the Banana River, which runs between Merritt Island and Canaveral Island. So um, this is a waterway that connects those bodies of water. And in order for sailboats to get from one to the other, uh, the bridge is not high enough, so they have a drawbridge here. Honestly, it doesn't go up a ton, but ironically, um, it has gone up for me a couple of times when I've been out and about. So I just wanted to make you aware of it. Not a big deal. Uh, just might be somewhat of a little bit of a delay in getting uh, from the um, from the uh, State Road 528, Florida 528, um, on to State Road 3, which will take you to and from the campground. Now, if you're wanting some things to do while you're staying here, there is so much in this area. The first thing I would suggest you do is come up to the Kennedy Space Center. It's just straight up the road on Courtney Avenue, and uh, it is amazing for kids or adults. 
Here we are inside the Kennedy Space Center and we're getting to see one of the rockets that was used on Apollo 8. You can't even begin to fathom the scope of this thing. We're going to go underneath it here. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's incredible. And it's all above you. Truly amazing. So there you have it, folks. That's Cars Park on Merritt Island, Florida. And uh, just to kind of recap, uh, remember, you have to be a member of Cars in order to camp here. First and foremost, you have to be a member first. Then, in addition to that, you cannot make reservations. This is a first come, first serve campground. So if you show up and there are no sites available, Unfortunately, you'll have to go elsewhere, all right? Um, and then third and also important is that this does not have full hookups. It is water and electric only, regardless of what site you're at, unless of course you're in those tent sites and then you have nothing. <laughs> um, so keep that in mind, right? So those are kind of the downsides. The plus side, people, that view behind me, right? Absolutely stunning, just beautiful. Uh, the other thing is just nature. The nature that you will see right here on this park is absolutely amazing. Um, my husband and I are runners and walkers and um, he has done it more than me while we've been here. But anyway, he does about three miles a day. And when he goes out and about, you see, uh, you're gonna see turtles, you're gonna see gators, you're gonna see all kinds of waterfowl and things of that nature. It's just really a beautiful place to be out and about. And uh, then third and final, it's so great to be this close uh, to Cape Canaveral and the Kennedy Space Center. We've gotten to see two launches since we've been here, one from NASA, one from SpaceX, and our fingers are crossed uh, that there will be another one tomorrow that we can watch as well. But there's just a lot of really great things to see and do here. Uh, there are manatees that you can drive just a half hour away and see manatees pretty close up. Uh, there's also Cocoa Beach. Uh, there's just so much to do and see here. Uh, we, as I mentioned, I kind of, you know, this is sort of like a little hidden treasure that we found. We were headed to Patrick Air Force Base or Pat Patrick Space Force Base, um, but they didn't have any room for us when we arrived. So we came here and uh, we just fell in love with the place. And quite frankly, once we got here, we had no desire to go to Patrick. So um, we did go over there and drive around and look at it. It's a very nice campground if you're interested, but uh, we just really felt like this was such a beautiful place to be. So we've loved every minute of it. So there you go, folks. Cars Park on Merritt Island, Florida. And uh, I hope you all are proud of me for sharing my hidden secret with you because I tell you, there was an internal battle with that decision. <laughs> but as always, we are Hendrick, home on the highway, and we'll see you down the road at another great campground soon.